All right, new scene. I'll just save this scene in case you want to come back to it. I am going to insert a new terrain. And of course, the very first things I want to do with this terrain are set its width, length, and set its height through the um, set height tool. So I'm going to set this to 200 by 200. And I'm going to set its height, set height to 300, which is halfway. Now I have the ability to dig down and also make mountains if I if I choose to later. I'll also put on a texture. We will put the sand texture on, where is it? As a base. And I will quickly put on some grass rock or muddy rock as a second. And just make a little track here. Alright. That's um, go to the next step. Let's put a basic car on. So from the standard assets, which you should have imported, we'll go to the car and to the prefabs and just drag on the car. And let's get rid of the main camera and put on the multi-purpose camera. And just make sure that the car is set to its target We'll also put the follow velocity on as checked. All right, let's just quickly play and see what happens. All right, cool, everything's working. So the first thing that, um, that we need to do or cross off the list is getting a timer started or triggered. So how do we do that? How do we make a timer? So first of all, let's put in some trigger boxes. Let's put in a game object, 3D object, a cube, and I'm going to, it's out in the space somewhere. So I know that this terrain is actually 300 high. I'm gonna just change that on the position on the transform of that cube, and then just bring it over well, my car is actually at 180 and 61, so I'll go 180 and 61. So it's right on the car now. I'm just going to move it off a little bit and just raise it above the terrain, so it's about 301 there. And we will resize it to about the width of the track. And I'll just drag on a material. If you forget how to make materials, you just right click, go to create, and create a new material, choose a color. So I'll go baby blue for this, or aqua, whatever that color is. And what happened there? And just drag it onto the cube. While we're at it, actually, I'll drag a color onto the car as well. All right, so. We have a box here, but it's not a trigger yet. So we need to also make sure we're on the, we'll rename this while we're at it too. This is going to be our start, finish object, game object. And we're going to set the box collider to trigger. And we need to do that because if we don't, it'll just be like a solid brick wall that we won't be able to pass through. And later on, we can actually turn the mesh renderer off and make it invisible and then put some other object here, maybe like a start gate or something like that. But for the meantime, we just want to leave it there so it's a visual so we can see what's going on. So, I want to trigger or I want to see if we can debug.log something when we go through this, because at the moment, if I push play, we're going through that, but nothing's actually happening. So I'm going to click on the car and we're going to create. I just, if yours looks a little bit different, it's probably because all these are open. So just close them all just to make things a little bit neater with, um, by hitting the little tri uh, yeah, triangles. And I'm going to add to this car a component, a new script, and I'm going to call it uh, Racing Racer Script. You can name it something you know something a little bit different that's what I'm gonna call this one create an ad 
and I'm going to double click and open this in uh, here it is so this is my racer script and I'll just make it a little bit larger so you can see it a bit better so this racer script is the script that runs when we run or push play and it will it will belong to the car object so what I want to do is I'm just going to rearrange my windows here so we can follow this a little bit easier I'm going to put this over here and I'm going to put unity snap it to the left here okay so what do we need to do here we need to make a trigger or I want to I want to see something I need I need to see a debug.log when we go through this um, start finish uh, game object so what we do here is we go void and we want to say on trigger enter and my Visual Studio uh, automatically finished that off for me but if it didn't this is what it needs to say void get rid of the private if it does put it there automatically void on trigger enter making sure that we have the capitals in the correct places and then open bracket collider and then other and we want to now just put in a debug dot log and say yes or test remember to control s to save that and let's just go and see what happens in the console i'm just going to turn my maximize on play off so we can see the console okay push play i'm going to go through have a debug.log which means the on trigger enter is working we're going through this box and we're triggering or that is trigger is working so how do we start a timer we've got the trigger to to start something but how do we actually start a timer so this is how a timer works we use something called time dot delta time and we use it in the update function first of all we're going to set a lap time so let's say let's let's create a a lap time uh, variable so it's going to be a public variable we could we could actually uh, turn this into a private but we'll, we'll just use the public for now public variable it's going to be a float type and it's going we'll call it lap time in our update function we're going to say lap time equals time dot delta time and again if your Visual Studio isn't doing the automatic updating of these terms and specific things in unity then you got to make sure that you're using the correct capitals in these places time capital small d for delta and then a capital T for time again now what this is going to do is put time into our lap time variable that's debug.log this lap time and see what this is actually doing in here so after this test we should get uh, the lap time happening sorry during the update we haven't put any triggers on here actually so lap time starts as soon as we push play and it gives us uh, the, these numbers that don't make sense at, yet but they will when we format them into two decimal place seconds and let's do that now actually so what we need to do is actually let's not do that first we want to we want to trigger this timer I'm messing up my windows here we want to trigger this timer to only start we don't want it to start straight away we only want it to start when we go through the green or not the green when we go through the aqua uh, start finish so it needs to be triggered in here 
we don't just drag this stuff into here. We need to have an if statement saying, have we gone through the trigger enter? And to do that, we need to, we need to first of all, create another, we'll call this a private, and this is going to be a bool, meaning a boolean, a true or a false. And we're going to call this a start, has the timer started, or start time timer. And this is going to be either true or false. And at the start, it's going to be obviously false. Because when you first start the game, the, the timer hasn't started, so we say it's false. But when we go through here, this on trigger enter, we want to set the start timer to true. And then we, we can use that in our update function because then we can say if the start timer is equal to true, then start calculating the lap times. And then we can debug that as well. Be careful with your curly brackets too. Alright, let's try this again. This shouldn't come up now until we actually go through the um, start finish cube. We'll clear this off and we'll push play. Okay, now it's started. Okay, cool. We... Those numbers, again, they don't make sense yet, but they will. This is actually... I've made a bit of a booby here. We have to actually add... The time.delta is a calculation of um, the present frame and the previous frame and how long it took to get to that frame. So if we add that, if we go lap, lap time equals lap time plus time.delta, we'll actually, let's see what, what it shows then, we'll actually have a count of all the frames per second. So this is our timer basically working now and we've started it when we go through the start stop or start, uh, start finish uh, game object. Let's um, see where we're at. So we've started the timer, we've triggered the start and we've got the, the timer basics working. But how do we display that now up at the top left and the top right? So let's do that in the next video.